What's going on, everyone? Uh, we're back with another episode of the After Hours Podcast. Uh, today, we have a very special guest, and very much everybody's been asking for him to come on. We have Oren, uh, who is one of the moderators at MIC, and he is one of the rare, primarily like trades mostly large caps, which is pretty cool. So everybody always thinks MIC is only shorting small caps or longing, but uh, we have a nice large cap room. So Oren, thank you for coming on, my man. Absolutely. So glad to be here with you guys. It's been long overdue. Yeah, bro, for sure. For, yeah. for sure. So what's so if you could run yourself through, introduce yourself, kind of talk a little bit about your trading and how you found MIC. Absolutely. Yeah. So I grew up in the New England area, go Patriots, okay. and ended up moving out to the West Coast for college. I went to Cal Poly San Luis Obispo, studied business there, and I concentrated in in computer information systems. So it's the data side of business, essentially. Mm -hmm. So I'm really into data analytics. And that's what I do now uh, as a full time career. So trading, I just do part time. But cool. for my full time career, I work for the Los Angeles Metro. So it's mm -hmm. a public cool. transit agency here in LA. Yeah. And essentially, I, I use all of the data we collect and do analysis on it. So actually, a lot of my trading does revol revolve around this, you know, looking at the charts and doing the analysis and, and reading cool. into the fundamentals. That's, that's what got me first interested in trading. Like, even though I studied business in college, I was not at all interested in finance or accounting or uh, really stock trading at all. I, I didn't really start diving into stock trading until Robinhood came out actually. <laughs> oh shit. Wow. Yeah. yeah. So I can thank Robinhood for getting me into trading because yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, before that, you know, it's just was like throw stuff in the 401k or, or, you know, whatever retirement mm -hmm. fund, buy some ETFs. Yeah. Um, yeah. So really I think cool. what, like 2014, yep. um, Robinhood, you know, I saw like, hey, free stock trading. I might as well just hop on. I'd, do a little bit of swing trading and, and some investing, mm -hmm. like buy AMD, but just essentially buying yeah. companies I knew mm -hmm. uh, to moderate success here and there. Yep. So probably by now, the how, end of that, I was How not, old are you at this point? At that point, I was 24, 25. Okay. So just out of college, really? Yeah. And I just turned 30 this year, Damn, but I didn't congrats. really, <laughs> thanks man. Yeah. I didn't really dive uh, deep into trading and being like, hey, this is actually a, a great way to make a supplemental income. Uh, probably until 2019, mm -hmm. end of 2019. Uh, at that point, you know, I've been working for Metro for a while and I'm like, I want some sort of side gig. You know, I want multiple streams of income. Yeah. yeah. Um, that's how you build wealth. And uh, you can't do it just doing a nine to five. So of I was looking at alternatives like working on the side or um, you know, trying, trying all these different side hustles. And then I just kind of put it all together. I'm like, well, you know, even though I haven't been that successful casually doing this trading on Robin hood, clearly tons of people are very successful. And mm -hmm. I saw that on Twitter, you know, I started following yeah. people on Twitter to get ideas. Yep. Uh, and I started seeing the success people were having, you know, obviously some of it's fake, but a lot of it's real. And mm -hmm. I, you know, I found MIC, I found Alex, and bow and pretty much like a lot of people in MIC from their tweets um, is how I heard about it. Oh, that's cool. And, it is cool. <clears throat> yeah. And so then I started diving into YouTube videos uh, and I just really liked that a lot of what MIC was teaching was about like trader psychology because yeah. I'm like that, that was my biggest issue. And I recognized it. I'm like, I'm, I get too emotional, like stocks yeah. go against me. I sell, you know, I buy high, I sell low, I'm chasing mm -hmm. all of the things that you learn not to do once you start getting an education. Of course. Do you say no. that, yeah. oh, sorry. Go I'm, no, go ahead, go ahead. Would you say that like everything you're doing is like, like, did you have like a certain strategy or were you just kind of like diving in and just like longing random things? And yeah. Just, and so were you like, 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 how do you like, Cause this is what I'm always like kind of wondering when people start is like, what type of stocks did you kind of like to buy or like, how would you even find out about a stock or like a, a particular ticker name? Cause like, I always find that super interesting because, you know, I'm looking at like maybe like a long swing strategy just to have in my back pocket and stuff. And, you know, 
I always wonder like, where does this, you know, volume come from of all these people like AMC <laughs> and GME and those things that catch on. So right. I was just kind of wondering like, what was your process towards kind of finding a stock? Yeah, for me, I would say I was mostly focused on stocks I knew. Um, your big tech companies. I wasn't really into like finding the small caps and yeah. and trying to you know take a stock from two dollars to twenty dollars. Like I was buying the names you, you're familiar with: Apple, AMD, Tesla. Um, but like I said, it wasn't. I was falling into the traps of FOMO. You know, I would see the mm -hmm. stock rallying over multiple days and then buy into it and then not have the patience yeah. to hold through the drawdown or not yeah. have a stop loss and re-enter. Uh, so you were always rate. doing large caps pretty always much? Always doing large cap, yeah. Cool. So, I like that. So, yeah. yeah, so I guess that was part of my initial hesitancy to join MIC was because I'm like, okay, these guys are mostly focused on small cap. Um, but the more I um, got the content and I'm like, it's all it's it doesn't matter small cap or large cap it's the process it's the principles and the rules right and understanding how Absolutely. to control your emotions while trading so that's Definitely. what what convinced me i'm like okay i need to i need to co commit to learning if i really want to be successful in this and actually mm -hmm. make it uh a, yeah. a side gig or a second stream of income of course so that's 2019 right so you found mic and yeah, at late that 2019 point yeah. Cool. So, and at that point, I guess, what was your turning point for success and how did you then, how did you find your niche? And then what was your turning point for success? Yeah. So that was 2020. Uh, 2020 was a really big year in terms of my trading career because a lot happened. You know, we all are, are very aware of the COVID crash yep. Yep. Um, and I got caught in it in a good way and a bad way. So I, I, uh, you know, at this point I had joined MIC, but I wasn't really uh, taking advantage of it yet. Yeah. So I was one of those people who had like signed up for a membership, started watching some videos, but I was still pretty much trading on my own and just lurking on the chat, reading it, getting ideas, um, reading from the large cap room, mm -hmm. but not really committing to learning how to trade and, and uh, learning the process. So. Um, at that point, I was also starting to dive into options. So uh, I was just really interested in how options worked, um, just kind of playing with them here and there. And then by chance, I had bought some puts on the market. Uh, I'd been following COVID really closely. Mm -hmm. So by, by January, I'm like, okay, I kind of think this is not your typical you know, virus Hello. from China yeah. scare. It seems like something more serious is coming out. Um, so I was already starting to be a little cautious in January. Um, and then the market kept ripping, ripping, ripping. And kind of by sheer luck, I bought the top with spy puts. Yep. And then the market collapses. <laughs> so in a week, I make 40K off like Holy shit. a $3,000 <laughs> position. Yeah. That's insane. Jeez, insane. Jesus, you know, without totally understanding what's going on, like yeah, I'm just, learning, <laughs> just learning <laughs> options, like, you know, and I got this like crazy excitement. I'm like, I just banked so much. Yeah. And I'm like, but this thing's going to keep crashing. And it's like the worst, you know, they say, the most experienced traders say, like the worst thing that can happen to you is making a lot by luck. Yeah. Yeah. Because you build these horrible habits and you yeah. build this this false sense of confidence. Yeah. So then I'm just gunslinging options overnight, you know, trying to do swing trades, trying to catch these big moves during like mm -hmm. the most volatile period in the market, which is not yeah. easy to trade, obviously. And I lost that 40K within like a month. Yep. Really? <laughs> Been there, bro. Yeah. Been there, bro. Yeah. Done yep. that shit. Oh, and, at, and at that point, I was like, I'm paying for MIC. I need to learn. I need to take advantage of this. I think Bao came on one night and he was like, yo, I'm going to be giving out like lifetime memberships. He may have had a few beers or something. So he was giving <laughs> out this like super good deal on the lifetime membership. And I was like, boom, I bought it. Like I'm, I'm joining in. 
Yeah. I remember this night. I actually remember yeah. this night that he was hammered. He, he yeah. was just throwing lifetime memberships out the window. He's like, fuck it. Yeah, he's like, you know, the first five people or whatever, you know, that messaged me. So I was committed to learning at that point because I'm Very like cool. the emotional trauma of yeah. that high to that low. Um, it made me recognize that, okay, I need to start working to be consistent. Yeah. And at that point, I didn't know my niche, you know, like I didn't know if I wanted, I knew I wanted to do large cap because I just have always been more interested in large caps uh, from even my earlier days of trading. Yeah. And I liked options too. So I w- I knew I was committed to that, but it was really like, do I want to be a day trader or a swing trader? And I think the volatility of that time period made me start leaning to, towards being a day trader. I thought, okay, you know, MIC is a little bit more specialized in day trading. Um, I, Joe's really successful of it. We have a lot of people in the large cap room that are successful in trading both equity and the options for, for large cap. Mm-hmm. So I really started committing to doing that. And I did it from about, I'd say April, 2020 until about November, maybe, maybe yeah, October, November. Uh, and I was about break even, you know, in my mind, I actually hadn't just lost that 40 K. I lost a little more. I lost another 10 K on top of that. Mm-hmm. Right. So now in my mind, I'm like, I need to make back this money. Right. And I think that pressure and like trying to learn how to day trade, um, having that pressure on and like that feeling like, Oh, I need to make this money back. is yeah, very, yeah. really negative towards your yeah. trading and your emotions. It's a weight. Huh? It's a weight. Yeah. And so I think that kind of hampered my day trading. Um, Cause I was like oversizing, I was getting emotional, all of the, the flaws of a day trader. Yeah. And oversizing in large caps, dude, you can find yourself like down big. I mean, I I've done it before like even trading like Tesla and stuff where like you just get a little too big too quick and you're like, holy shit, I'm down a lot of money. (laughs) Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, so the first like three months of that were probably more negative. You know, I was Mm -hmm. still digging the hole a little bit deeper, not, not bad. Um, Mm -hmm. but enough that it was like really hurting my morale and my confidence. I'm like, I don't know if I'm ever going to get the hang of this. And then some, I started to like get back up. So I was getting like break even months. Yep. Um, but then after about doing that for half a year, I was like, I just don't think day trading fits my personality. Yeah. And I wanted to start focusing back on swing trading, which is what I was doing prior to MIC. Yeah. Um, and I'm like, I can take the, the lessons that I'm learning from MIC, from the process, from controlling your emotions. And not only that, but also like the technical analysis so many things that apply to day trading also apply to swing trading, yeah. being patient, being patient, uh, waiting for your lines, you know, all of that applies. And uh, in my mind, I'm like, I'm getting stressed out doing day trading. So I'm going to, I'm going to pivot at this point. And that pivot was really when I became consistently profitable. Cause I'm like, okay, now I found my niche and I pretty quickly felt right. Very and cool. Yeah, and I just started diving deeper into day, er, into swing trading, and I've been doing that since. So almost a year of, I'd say like ninety five percent swing trading. Wow. Uh, now, yeah. How long are your swings on average? Are you like a one day, multiple day? Like, how kind of time frames do you look for? A pretty good mix. Um, so, cool. yeah, sometimes they're just overnight. Uh, other times I've been holding for weeks, months. Uh, a few I've almost held a year. So, wow, (laughs) I I haven't, I haven't held a stock more than like five minutes, bro. (laughs) Yeah, I know. I would say a majority though, a majority are under three months. Cool. It's still good though. Yeah. So you kind of, uh, you know, I guess you had that insane, uh, you know, drawdown and then, you know, uh, just your break even for a bit and then you kind of committed and then um you know now you're on that kind of path on like swing trading and stuff like that um do you have any like kind of like process advice for someone who's trying to learn like you know just like you are like do you have any like 
tips to get started? Like, how'd you start? Like, what were things do you think that made you consistent? And, you know, any process tips for anyone who's kind of new and is kind of looking to get involved in that type of, you know, market as well? Yeah, absolutely. That's a great question. And I think so much of it goes back to your personality and and the cliche that everyone is saying, like, find your niche, find your niche. And yeah, it's, I think when people are saying that to you and you don't uh, really know what it is yet, it's kind of frustrating. Like, I don't know what my niche is. Like, yeah. what, like what, what does that even mean really? Um, but once you like finally find that spot and are starting to be profitable and you just feel more calm in your trading, like everyone's personality matches a different type of trading. Yeah. Um, and that's really what you're finding your niche is, is just finding the type of trading that fits your personality. Um, so I would say when you're first starting, it is good to go between multiple things if you don't really know right away. You know, check out the small caps, check out shorting, longing, large cap options, but just keep your size small and make sure you're focusing on learning first instead of diving in head first, because otherwise you're going to end up blowing up an account uh, and learning bad habits. So take the time to, to try different things, but don't, don't oversize into um, your positions while you're learning. And don't try to do multiple things at once. Like a lot of people I know in MIC who are still looking for consistency come and chat me and they're like, hey, you know, I'm trying to get into swing trading, but right now I'm shorting small caps. And I'm like, that's great that you want to get into swing trading, but trying to do both at the same time is really difficult. You know, each one takes a lot of focus and energy. Uh, so trying to do, trying to spread yourself too thin is a, a pretty good way to guarantee you're going to be like frustrated, stressed out, and probably not trading well. I like that. Now, do you recommend like when you're new like this, like a lot of people ask the large cap guys, what do you recommend for like data tracking or spreadsheets? Do you even recommend people when they're new do that? Or is it too much? Is it overwhelming? And like kind of what do you do for it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it's, it's a little bit uh, overboard to go like deep into the data tracking. Obviously, I love data. And I think it's especially in trading where so much of what we do looking at the charts is all it's all based off data. It's just visualizations of, of data. Yeah. But yeah. it's so easy to overload yourself with that. And I think keep it simple, right? Just keep it simple. People often ask me, like, how do you find what tickers you're trading? I'm like, I'm just trading the big names that we all talk about and what you know about. You know? Snapchat, yeah. Twitter, Facebook, like all the social media, all the tech companies. Um, you know, just look at the S&P 500 list. And those are the stocks I'm trading, really. I'm not, I'm not going out and searching for the unknown stock, the holy grail that's going to go from like $10 to $300. Even though I did almost catch GME. <laughs> I remember the story. Yeah, that's fucking yeah. crazy. That's hilarious. And that's so I guess, too early. I mean, I mean, that's cool, though. I mean, I think a lot of people, they struggle with the concept of data. Like, I'm, my brain isn't wired that way. And I think it's cool for people to know that, you know, there's, there's two, two sides of it. You know, if you want to track or do spreadsheets or charting, like, everyone has their, their way of, of backtesting and, it, and it's okay. And I think that's cool right. that you are someone who is kind of data driven and, and whatnot. And I'm asked, I'm actually just realized why I keep blanking out is because Joe Kelly was just texting me. So he has his large cap webinar tonight, which, um, which we can't be on the zoom for, Harry, <laughs> but, but yeah, we still yeah have, like, that's me who's always on the zoom. It's okay. But we got like five minutes and I guess before we kind of wrap it up, what, what would be, the most important small piece of advice. I know you gave a good, a good little session there on like sizing and focusing in, but what is one thing you wish as a new trader, you someone told you, and you think that probably would have cut your learning curve like in half. Yeah, that's a good question. It's a tough one. It is a Makes tough people one. Think. Yeah. I mean, the can, biggest, think. yeah. The biggest thing is just take your time. You know, we're, we're in this for a lo hopefully a long time, not a yeah. 
you know, so it's not a get rich quick type of scheme. <laughs> so yeah, of course. take your time to learn. And, and this is what everyone preaches. And it's like the same thing with everything in life. You can't just jump in and assume that you're going to be great. You know, like, sure, you can get lucky and buy and happen to have bought some crazy options and got rich quick. Um, but for every person that does that, so many countless more lose all their money, yeah. you're essentially like gambling. So just start That's small, good. start small. You don't need to necessarily paper trade because I think paper trading is a little, it takes away the emotional aspect of it, but Absolutely. just use a size that you're cus- uh, comfortable with because so many people view trading as like this way to make money, to, to start paying rent, to start buying all these nice things. And it's like, don't quit your job. You know, view trading as a way, first of all, just Look at it as a a learning process, you know, like, okay, I'm going to get educated in trading and the stock market and finance, and then I'm going to incrementally start building it as like a business. Like I'm going to start, start small, you know, I might incur some losses in the beginning, but I'll learn how to do the business better. And then by the time I start adding more capital, I'll be winning more often and then all of a sudden your, you know, your account is over PDT and you're able to day trade, you're able to do more uh, strategies and have more positions. So just start small that. and build up, start small and build up. I love that, man. I love that. I think that's really solid, awesome advice, especially for anyone trying to get into trading in general, but especially large yeah. caps, because it, it can be super overwhelming, but I hate, I hate having to wrap these things up short and uh, Joe said he's going to fire us both. Um, but it <laughs> oh, can always be you. a number two. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's what I'm saying. Well, we'd love to have you back on too. And, and like, I know yep. a lot of members would love to hear about large cap strategy and like just overall market sentiment and stuff. So we really do appreciate you coming on and would love to get you back on for sure. Yeah, absolutely sure. guys. Yeah. Sure. It was Perfect. a lot of fun and we'll do it again. Awesome, man. Well, thank you again. All, All right. right have a good night. Okay. Bye. All right, you too, buddy.